chair recognizes Dr. David Platt, president of the International Mission Board, for a report. Thank you, Mr. President and messengers of the Southern Baptist Convention for this opportunity to report on the work of the IMB. By the grace of God and through the generous support of Southern Baptist churches, the IMB is positioned on strong biblical foundations and we are standing on firm financial ground. Our giving is up through both the cooperative program and Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and our sending is up. We will send, Lord willing, more missionaries this year than we have in years. In other words, <laughs> brothers and sisters, the IMB is open for business. We believe every church, regardless of size or resources, has a vital role to play in spreading the gospel to every nation, and we have now multiple pathways for churches of all sizes to send all sorts of missionaries around the world. In February of this year, I asked the trustees of the IMB to begin a search for a successor for me as I stepped back into pastoral ministry in Washington, D.C. A search committee was formed and is working hard, and much of the conversation about the IMB, even at this convention, has revolved around who its next leader might be. But I want to be crystal clear in my report. The IMB is not about a president. The IMB is not about David Platt in the present, and the IMB is not about another president in the future. The IMB is about a coalition of 47,000 churches working together to support thousands of anonymous missionaries whose names and places where they work can't even be mentioned in public because they are spreading the gospel at the risk of their lives. They are the IMB, and I want to report to you this morning on what they are doing. In preparation for today, I asked our missionaries to send me brief Twitter-length updates that summarize what we've seen happen in the world over the last year, or even the last week. I received countless responses. Obviously, I don't have time to go into all of them today, but I do want to share some of them. And unfortunately, I can't speak in terms of specific locations because of security concerns, so I'll use more general descriptors. But here's what the conversation concerning the IMB should be about. A Muslim people group is hearing the gospel for the first time in one of the largest slums in sub-Saharan Africa. We are seeing thousands of Persian, Iranian, and Afghan refugees coming to know Christ across Europe. One church in a European city started four new churches in the last year. Just to give you a picture of the nations in those churches, when six people were recently baptized, two were European, one was Chinese, and the other three were Iranian. We just saw a Yazidi refugee who was fleeing ISIS come to Christ and get baptized. Last month, after years of work, we finally planted a church in a country that's almost 100% Muslim. In the Democratic Republic of the Congo, we train 160 national pastors and missionaries to reach 32 Bible-less peoples. In one village in South Asia, we train 40 pastors and church leaders to reach migrant people groups in the villages around them. God is raising up biblically grounded leaders for the church in East Asia through theological education that is now being conducted completely in their local language. Leaders are being trained at seminaries in the Americas, Europe, East Asia, Southeast Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. One theological seminary has grown from 50 to 550 students in the last four years. This year, we're training 100 pastors, 40 church planners, and 40 international missionaries, all of them just having enrolled in this one seminary. New church plants in one previously unreached community have tripled from a year ago. After hearing the gospel and counting the cost for almost three years, a Central Asian woman came to Christ in a totally unreached people group. Well, used to be a totally unreached people group. We trained one lo local pastor who was leading an unhealthy church. We trained him to do expository preaching, and now he's seeing God change hearts through the power of his word. 
We've been trying for years to get access to one particular unengaged, unreached people group, and we finally have access. They are engaged, and this people group is finally going to hear the gospel. We shared the gospel with a dying man who was a lifelong atheist. He trusted Christ one day, was baptized the next, and he died the following day. This brother is now with Jesus. We're seeing refugees come to Christ, become disciple makers, and return to their war-torn homeland to rebuild the foundations of their lives and communities on the gospel of Jesus Christ. An East Asian couple we trained is now being sent out as missionaries to a Middle Eastern country. Last week, we shared the gospel, shared the gospel alongside our local partners with over 1,100 Muslims in three days. Even as Venezuela implodes and people die of hunger, lack basic medicines, both those remaining and those immigrating are coming to Christ as they hear the message of hope in the gospel. We're sharing Christ with the deaf around the world through social media and other electronic means, and they're coming to faith in him. Village leaders in one unreached area are begging us to come back and teach them more of the Bible. In one country in Sub-Saharan Africa, we train nearly 200 pastors in the characteristics of a healthy biblical church. And here's one fuller story. In one Muslim country in Southeast Asia, one of our missionaries was with one of his national partners named Ahmad. It looked like it was about to rain, and Ahmad asked our missionary if he could borrow an old shirt to wear as he rode his motorcycle because he didn't want to get his new jacket wet. Our missionary handed him a big white t-shirt. Looked like it was about to rain. As Ahmad got on his motorcycle, he started on his trip, though, and indeed it started raining. As many people do, he pulled his motorcycle over under an awning. As he stood there, the owners of a house nearby came out and, as is their custom, invited him in for tea. He went in, and over tea, Ahmad thought, I might as well share the gospel. And after he did, he asked the couple, do you want to believe and be baptized? And without any hesitation, they said yes. Ahmad was taken back at how quickly they responded, and he said, do you understand what you're doing? that you will probably be shunned by your family for this or even worse? And the man said, you don't understand. I've had several dreams over the last three nights, and in each dream, a man wearing white has told me he had the way to salvation for my family and me. Last night, the man, that man appeared to me again and told me a man dressed in white would come to my home the next day and share the way of salvation. When we saw you standing outside, we knew we needed to invite you in and hear whatever you had to say to us. This formerly Muslim couple is now a follower of Isa the Messiah. So if anyone asks you what's happening at the IMB, you tell them disciples are being made, churches are being multiplied, and Jesus Christ is being glorified among people who have never even heard his name. Mr. President, that is my report on the work of the International Mission Board. Are there any questions concerning the report? There are none. Thank you.